Thinking about that new MacBook Air for work or school? While it's a great machine that created a new market for thin and light laptops, now is definitely not the time to buy any computer if possible. First, all computer companies are trying to sell all of the old 2011 models to make room for the newly released 2012 processors. Lenovo is working on a product that will show off one of the main ideas behind Windows 8, the convergence of laptops and tablets. It will be an ultrabook that turns into a tablet with a monitor that folds over 360 degrees. Recently, when asked about this convergence, Tim Cook said, You can converge a toaster and a refrigerator, but you know those things are probably not going to be pleasing to the user. So Apple has no intention of fighting Microsoft in a battle for convergence of hardware, but will continue to innovate in the laptop market through an updated MacBook Air. So what's the problem with buying one now? Two words, Ivy Bridge. Today, Apple sells two different sizes. The standard 11-inch model has a 1.6 gigahertz dual-core i5 with a 64 or 128 gigabyte solid-state drive, and two or four gigs of memory, while the 13-inch model has a 1.7i5 with 128 or 256 gigabytes of storage and four gigs of memory. All have three megabytes of L3 cache. For graphics, they all rely on the integrated Intel HD Graphics 3000. In the upcoming refresh, the MacBook Airs will see a 5 to 10 percent bump in core processing power and a 20 to 100 percent bump in graphics as they switch from Sandy Bridge to Ivy Bridge processors. A 1.7 in the 11-inch, a 1.9 in the 13-inch, and a 2.0 in a brand new 15-inch model. Why a 15-inch? At CES 2012, Intel PC client chief Muli Eden revealed that of the 75-plus Ultrabooks launching soon, 50% will have 14 and 15-inch displays. Samsung already has a 15-inch model on its website, and demand is growing for 14-inch Ultrabooks in Asia. A 15-inch MacBook Air would be a good response to this growing trend. For Apple, everything is falling into place for this to be the year of the display. There needs to be a resolution bump. The new integrated Intel HD 4000 GPU can handle resolutions up to 2560 by 1600 and support three displays. The smallest MacBook Air should support 1440 by 900, and hopefully the 15-inch will be full high definition at 1920 by 1200. These improvements call into question the viability of the 13-inch MacBook Pro. For sure, I think Apple will keep the 15 and probably the 17-inch models, but there may be more value in promoting the MacBook Air for the smaller categories. All these models would need to have at least 4 gigabytes of RAM to support the improved graphics. There should also be a bump in storage space. Out of the box, the installed OS X and basic apps can take up to 18 gigabytes, and if you plan on dual booting with Windows, you will need an extra 20 gigs. Although you can use an external hard drive to store most media, once you start adding more applications and high-resolution photos and videos, 64 gigs starts to feel tight. With prices falling over the past six months, Apple should offer a 128 or 256 gigabyte SSD on the smaller units and a 256 upgradable to 512 on the 15 inch. This is all speculation, but one thing is certain, Apple will update the MacBook Air. The big question is, when could all this take place? With the Worldwide Developers Conference coming up, Tim Cook could use this opportunity to not only introduce iOS 6 and OS 10 Mountain Lion, but if Apple is ready, he will probably talk about a refresh of Mac computers. This could be the year we see Apple focusing on graphics performance and resolution across the entire product line. What do you think? If you want to see more stuff like this, subscribe, comment, and check out the channel. Thanks for your support.